Good morning, and welcome to St. Gregory the Great Parish Faith Community. We're pleased that you are with us this morning to share the celebration. My name is Jennifer Eman, and I will be your lector for today's Mass. Our celebrant today, Father Leon, and he will be assisted by Deacon Paul Walter. This Monday, the parish will be closed for Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Only one daily Mass will be celebrated at 8 a.m. Important events this week at St. Gregory's include the Knights of Columbus Youth Free Throw Championship, a January outreach to collect winter clothes for children, the Moms March for Life, the beginning of the St. Greg's online auction, and much more. Information on the Enchanted Concert is available in the vestibule this weekend. Please come out and learn more. Please take and read the bulletin today and discover all of the life-giving ways that God is working and waiting for you at St. Gregory's. At this time, I ask you to please stand and welcome those around you here for Mass today. everyone. We gather this day, of course, we are down the beginnings of the season of ordinary time where we reflect upon and hear of Jesus' life and teaching, his healing, all of the events of his ministry and try to uh, reflect upon them to make them the very fabric of our daily lives. So we pray for that grace this day as we call upon the Lord to use as good stewards all of what he has given to us. And we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. To prepare ourselves to once again come worthily to the altar, to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we pause to call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. 
Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. prophet Isaiah. The Lord said to me, You are my servant, Israel, through whom I show my glory. Now the Lord has spoken who formed me as his servant from the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him and Israel gathered to him. And I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord, and my God is now my strength. It is too little, the Lord says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel. I will make you the light of the nation, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Sosthenes, our brother, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to you who have been sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be holy, with all those everywhere who call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to the Lord. John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He is the one of whom I said, A man is coming after me who ranks ahead of me because he existed before me. I did not know him, but the reason why I came baptizing with water was that he might be made known to Israel. John testified further, saying, I saw the Spirit come down like a dove from heaven and remain upon him. I did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, On whomever you see the Spirit come down and remain, he is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Now I have seen and testified that he is the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, this Sunday, actually, I am speaking at all of the Masses, which means no one is going to escape, you know. And uh, whenever the pastor speaks at all the Masses, everyone wonders what's going on, you know, because it doesn't happen all that often. And uh, what is really going on is that for us here at St. Gregory's, we are reflecting on stewardship. So today would really be considered a Stewardship Sunday. And before you start thinking to yourself, how much money is he going to ask us for? You know, or you start reaching for your wallet or the checkbook. It's not about money. The hawk is not about money. But stewardship, genuine stewardship, really has three important elements, and that is time, talent, and treasure. That we're to see the totality of our life, all of who we are, all of what we've been blessed with, both physically and personally, and uh, to reflect on how do we use our time, how do we use our talent, and ultimately, too, how do we use our treasure to give greater glory to God. And so uh, today, really just to reflect on that stewardship of time, and in particular, how do we use our time, and how do we use our time really in prayer? And what goes on within that prayer. 
And perhaps a, a simple question to begin with to start this time is you think of your time, talent, and treasure, all of who you are, what you possess. Simple question. Do you own stuff or are you a steward of God's stuff? Two very different ways to look at things. Do you own stuff or are you a steward of God's stuff? Basic question. And uh, in other words, are you an owner or are you a steward? Basic philosophy of thought. If you own, well, you probably have had these buried thoughts. If you're an owner, well, you know, after all, it's mine. I can do with it as I want. Belongs to me. I own it. These are my possessions, my time, my talent, my treasure. Doesn't belong to anyone else. Perhaps uh, if you've lost something, you might resent when someone takes something that was yours or some part of your life is no longer there. If some person in your life is no longer there, you might resent that they're gone. Maybe you also would feel that there's no need to be grateful. Why do I need to be grateful? After all, I've worked for all of this. It belongs to me. If any of those thoughts resonate with you, I suppose I would say you're probably an owner. Uh, a steward would look at things very differently. A steward would first of all say, well, this is really a gift. Everything that I have, time, talent, treasure, all of who I am, that's really a gift that was entrusted to me from God. And none of it belongs to me. They're not my possessions. They belong to the Lord. And I am thankful for what God has given to me. And even if a time comes that something or someone is no longer with me, they're taken away, or something or something I've been able to do is no longer part of my life, well, rather than be angry, I'm still thankful that I was blessed enough to have it for as long as I did. If your thoughts go in that direction, you're really probably more of a steward rather than an owner. So simple question to ponder, are you an owner or are you a steward? This Sunday we have great examples of stewardship, particularly the area of time spent in prayer and what was accomplished because of it in our reading. And if you think for a moment the last two weeks, I think the entire nation and even beyond has been called to prayer. You see, a couple Mondays ago, the NFL accomplished in a couple hours what you and I are supposed to be doing all of our lives, with calling ourselves and others to pray. They managed to pull it off in a couple hours after DeMar had his cardiac arrest. And of course, we do pray for him. But what did we, what did we see that Monday and the days that followed the last couple of weeks? saw football players on two teams kneel in prayer. We saw sportscasters calling us to pray. We saw one sportscaster who said, I'm not even going to tell you to pray, we're just going to pray. And he, a national television broke out in a prayer. We saw in the local news and national news uh, anchors telling us to pray. And even the public schools were praying, you know, that's not allowed there. And uh, even there I saw on the news, prayers for DeMar, posters that the kids were making and, and hanging. You know, the NFL has accomplished what you and I are supposed to be about each and every day in our own life as well as calling others to the exact same thing. Now, I'm quite certain some of the... You know, football players are all baptized, a good number of them at least, and so they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, calling us to pray. But you and I are called to do the same thing. And so if we take that call of prayer to the Scripture and the stewardship of our time in prayer to the Scripture, who do we see? Well, we see Isaiah. In the first reading, Isaiah was a great prophet, and he prophesied during a time of great trouble in Israel. And uh, how did he do it? 
Well, he prayed. He listened to the Lord. He was a mouthpiece for God. That's what it means to be a prophet. You're a mouthpiece for God. And in prayer, he knew what to say. And we heard just a small part of the fifth servant song present in Isaiah. And what do we hear? Servant of the Lord. Servant of the Lord recounting the words that the Lord gave him. Well, who is the servant of the Lord? Scripture scholars have dwelt on that one. Some would say, well, it it could refer to the king of Israel. It could refer to the high priest. Some would say, well, it's a messianic prophecy that the Savior of the world is going to come. You know, these individuals, they're the Savior of the world. And uh, we won't debate that point of theology, but one thing I am certain of is that the servant of the Lord is the person who uses their time, their talent, their treasure to be of the purpose of God. You and I are called to be servants of the Lord by our baptism. We're the servants of the Lord right here, right now. And then we went from that reading to the 40th Psalm, which is one of the Psalms of King David. Of course, King David is one of the great kings of Israel. And he was a great king of Israel. Why? He realized it wasn't his kingdom. He realized it belonged to God. It's not my kingdom. It's God's kingdom. It's entrusted to me to lead. And what do we hear in the Psalms? So many of them written by King David. They're his prayers. That's what the Psalms are. King David was a great king. Why? Because he he prayed. And he listened to the Lord. And then what do we hear in the refrain? Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. Well, that's a beautiful refrain. Part of prayer. Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. Do we approach the Lord that way? Or is it, here I am, Lord, I have come to tell you my will to do. Two different ways to pray. Of course, the psalm and that refrain reminds us of the great Eli the priest and Samuel. Eli, of course, one of the priests in the temple. Samuel, a youngster, entrusted to his care to form. And uh, one night, Samuel wakes up hearing that he's being called. He goes to Eli, wakes him up, did you call me? I didn't call you, go back to bed. And so he does, and Samuel wakes up again and goes to Samuel, to uh, Eli. You called me. I didn't call you. Go back to sleep. And after that happened a few times, finally Eli figured out what was going on, that the, the Lord was calling Samuel. And he said, you know, Samuel, next time you hear this, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Do we approach the Lord that way, or is it rather, listen, Lord, your servant is speaking? Two different ways to pray. And speak, Lord, your servant is listening leads ultimately to hear, and my Lord, I come to do your will. It is in that prayer and listening to the Lord that we learn his will and do that. You know, both David and Samuel literally worshiped God. They offered sacrifice, public liturgy. But we learn that external Worship isn't enough. It begins here. Our public worship begins here. But it needs to change us internally, personally. Conversion within our mind, heart, and soul. And as all of that takes place, then we become more consistent with the will of God. External worship leading to internal conversion calls us to obedience to God's will. To embrace God's purpose for our life. Basically, to be a steward. Are we a steward or are we an owner? In St. Paul, the second reading to the Corinthians, in the very beginning of this reading, what does he do? He calls the Corinthians and you and me to be holy, to be sacred, to be sanctified, to be holy. Back at Our Lady of Pompeii, where I served before being here at St. Greg's, they had a a large poster in the sacristy, and top of the poster in large print it said, Get holy or die trying. You know, get holy or die trying. And uh, underneath it listed a number of the martyrs of the church, those who did die in holiness. And St. Paul reminds us to be holy and to 
perhaps die trying. Gospel, we hear John the Baptist in the very moment that he's in the womb. He is uh, of God's will. We hear that he leaps with joy in Elizabeth's womb when Mary's greeting sounds in her ears because he knew he was in the presence of the Lord. And, and, and what did John do? He, went, he spent his life in prayer in the, in the desert and then was equipped to know God's will to point to Jesus to baptize and prepare the way of the Lord. Of course, Jesus himself, he spent time in prayer fully divine, fully human, but in that full humanity, we hear often that he went to the desert to pray. And why? He went to the desert to pray, I'm certain not, because he ran out of people to heal or teach. I'm sure the moment did not come, well, everything's done there, nobody needs me, I'll take the afternoon off. I don't think that's what happened. I think he knew that he needed to be in communion with the Father in prayer. And so, we are called to do the same, to be that steward, to know the will of the Father, to be in communion with Him. I want you to suppose for a moment that every day this year, I am personally going to give you $1,440. Now, I'm not going to do that, but I want you to suppose it, you know. And uh, I did not become the new billionaire you know, in the lottery. And, uh, but suppose I give you $1,440 every day. There's one caveat. You must spend it. You cannot save it. And at midnight, if you did not spend it, it's gone. But at midnight, you'll get another $1,440. What, what would you spend that money on? And as you ponder that for a minute, knowing that I'm not giving you the money, but do know that God gives you and me 1,440 minutes every day. And at midnight, they're done. We get a new installment of a new day, 1,440 minutes. What is it that you do with that time? And how much of that time do you use in communion with God in prayer to know His will? This stewardship... Sunday, I ask you to contemplate that, and in the pews, you have cards, and I invite you to take one, pass them down. This is really for everyone, for adults, for our teenagers, for everyone, and the copy of the card will be up there on the board in a moment. And these cards have a, a left side and a right side, and they're essentially the same. The only difference is that the card on the left side is one we want you to fill out and place in the collection basket either today or take it home with you and, and bring it next week. And the card on the right side is for you to keep. It's identical. just says on the bottom, keep this one and put it someplace that you know you're going to see it, maybe on the refrigerator or tape it to your computer or the dashboard of the car, someplace you know you're going to see it to be reminded. And what is this card about? It's asking you to make a commitment of your time and prayer. And it lists the number of opportunities you have right here at St. Greg to utilize some of your time in prayer. And as you go through that list, you might say, oh, I already do this, I'm done. No, that's not what it's about. It's, it, if you began there, now you add more. And you give more of that time to the Lord in prayer. And uh, if there's something that you've committed to that's maybe not here, write, write that down. So it's not an exhaustive list, it's a suggestion. And uh, either today to place that into the basket or take it home with you, reflect on it, and uh, bring it back next Sunday. And we're going to put them all up on the altar as a gift of our time that God has given to us as a gift back to the Lord. And they're going to be up at the altar for a couple of weeks as part of our prayer. You know, very often as a priest I'm asked, where are the Isaiahs today? Where are those individuals who are the mouthpiece of God calling us in the right direction? And I've often asked, where are those leaders of our nation and the world? Where are those leaders like King David who realized that it all belonged to God and, and pointed everyone in that direction? And so often I'm, I'm asked, where are the John the Baptists in our daily life to just point us in that direction. 
Where are they? Well, I can tell you where they are because they exist. It's you. It's me. We are these individuals. And the only way Isaiah did what he did and John the Baptist did what he did and King David did what he did was because they were steeped in prayer. And it was in that prayer they listened to the Lord, accepted His will as their own, and did it. We can transform the world and the power of our prayer and the fruits that follow. We consider that the Stewardship Sunday. this time we invite those uh, preparing for full initiation in the church to come forward. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing upon our brother and upon our sisters who are preparing for full initiation in the church this Easter. May they know of our love and our commitment to pray for them at this critical time in their lives. And we pray, Lord, you bless them to listen attentively to your will and to make your will their own. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. pray, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God and light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made for us men and our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and a life for the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you desiring to truly be your stewards to see all of who we are and what we possess belonging to you and to use our lives as that gift back to you. Hear now our needs and petitions and help us on our way. For all pastors in our church, may they become zealous teachers of the gospel, stirred by the wisdom of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people in the United States, as we celebrate Martin Luther King Jr. Day, may justice, peace, and love prevail in our country. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the success of the March for Life this week, may the Lord accompany those who walk, heal those who mourn, and protect those who are unborn. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the success of our Stewardship of Time campaign, may it develop an attitude of gratitude in our hearts 
and an openness to daily prayer in our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and religious life. May men and women generously respond to the invitation of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who will be baptized this year, may they know of our love and support as we welcome them into the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died in faith, may they be granted the rewards and blessings of the kingdom, especially those who have passed on this week from our parish and faith community. John Colonna. William Conway. Charles Manuel. Margaret Egan. James Kennedy. Richard Sukan, and especially for the Kosas family and the James and Andrew DeMario, we pray for, to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own prayers and concerns for which we offer now in our prayerful silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we offer you these, our needs and intentions. We humbly ask you, please, hear us and help us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our ushers will now take up the collection. Our gift bearers at today's Mass will be members of the Piazza family.
sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You form man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all of its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
will bless Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Gregory the Great and all the saints, who please you throughout the ages we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. from God and to use our time, our talent, our treasure as that gives back to Him to be His will being done in the world today through our words and actions. We pray for that grace that our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, as we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who says to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the face of your church graciously. Grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And now let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
We all know we are in ordinary times, so the Christmas decorations are put away, at least here in church, I think. My tree at the rectory, hopefully by Easter, uh, it will be down. <laughs> and uh, But the, the poinsettias remain, and uh, we thank all those who gave memorials towards them, and, and the list of all those are in the bulletin, and so we invite you to take the bulletin home with you to see that, as, as well as all the other things going on, the, the open house for the school at the end of the month, and a family concert coming up, as well as a meat raffle, and the online parish auction in place of the in-person one. Next year we'll be back to the in-person one. So uh, many things going on. Of course, high school youth group tonight at 5.30, and a uh, young adult group for our uh, 18 to 30s group Tuesdays. So many things happening. So do take a bulletin home, and uh, we invite you to come and participate, hopefully, in all of them. Let us pray. Pour on us, O oh Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. We offer the prayer for renewal. In every age, O oh God, you have called us to be your people, to be your church. In this time we begin anew to discern the pathways that will lead us, your people, closer to you. Continually bless our journey as we proclaim your good news, celebrate your saving presence among us, serve others with charity and justice, and steward the world you've entrusted to our care. Send your spirit to lead and guide our mayor's journey as we commit ourselves to the renewal of our church. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen.